All right. Um, good morning and welcome to the next installment in the epigraphy series on uh, the inscription from Tamiz. Um, today we're just going to continue our work with this um, with this text here, this inscription from the Church of Raphael. Um, I hope my voice will hold. Yesterday I had a bit of a sore throat, then I became very worried I had COVID, so I booked a test tomorrow. Um, today I feel better, I don't know, like you become completely um, hypochondriac in this uh, situation. Anyhow, um, there were two things that I realized last week when I was reviewing the video that I'm a complete idiot. Um, the first one is that this Tansloa is not the firm at all and there is really no uh, lambda here at all, like this is completely ridiculous. The canonical form here would be oh wait this is shiragana uh, where is my content like this and actually this is also like a much better reading because you can you can actually see let me I wonder if I can do this you can see here this shape, um, which is a much better fit than a lambda, which um, honestly, I, you know, you would have to, I mean, you would have to say something like this to see a lambda. But the good thing is this swirl is really quite clear. So this is a jima. Um, it means also that this hole is filled a little bit better, which I find comforting. Uh, because you can see here this nisi deken that ends here. Or not a kappa ends here apparently according to our description last time. And so we have quite a lot of space here, as you can see. And um, this is now a little bit better filled. Okay, the other thing is, is last time it's like, what can this go? This, what the hell is this? It's not possible ending. Um, of course, completely idiotic from my side because it can very well be a um, a plural, um, which means that there <coughs> should be an epsilon here. Just so we have uh, our word here, pare. Then we have a gamma here, perfectly visible. Then this round shape obviously is an omicron. But then the question is, what is here, right? Because I don't think there's anything here on the, where is there? Well, you see that the, the thing is, uh, this is certainly the last margin. It goes here, this is also fine. But here, you know, I see something here. Maybe there is something here. Because here are letters. It's really weird just to have a single epsilon here. This is clearly a margin. Yeah, this is also the margin here. Maybe this is just dirt. Yeah, maybe this indeed is just a margin like this. Yeah, maybe this is not something. Because you see it, it, it's a bit wavy. It's, maybe it's the shape of the stone. 
Oh, you see this here, it's better. Yeah, you really see that it's just the left margin is really a bit wavy. Maybe this pilaster is also like this pilaster is also not really straight, right? You see the edge here. Then there's this indent. Right, it's as if this inscription here, this is the edge. What is this? This looks like a different material. Was this added later or earlier? And so this is really the problem when you don't have the 3D object in front of you. It's like, you know, what, when, when you see it in front of you, you know immediately, okay, this is added later, this is, this is newer, this is old, or here it's scratched. But like, when you're dealing with these 2D images. Let me see here's this indent. Okay, so I'm not gonna be too worried about this now. Oh, no, it doesn't go away at all. Um, I think it's unlikely that there's an option on here. You would never break off a word like that. But that does mean that there is... Or maybe it's pareko. Like field holding. I'm not, I'm not gonna put anything here because here's the last letter. We know the right edge is here. I think it's completely broken off. Okay, um, don't know, but actually this is not an, a, a, a totally crazy reading. So I'm just gonna leave that in. So now that we have a first, transcription just based on the image, the next step is to, to start an analysis. And then what I do is I, I just start with sections that are promising um, and then take the dictionary, look up what are the possibilities, you know, like we, we identified a few sections the other somewhere. There's this curse-like and there is this all authorities which is nice because I remember this appears in several other texts, so we can look at these texts and then see maybe something similar is happening here. Um, this obviously we already completely read and reconstructed. And then there are a few specific words that we can look at. For example, there is this really interesting language where we have SAG here, which is um, like some form of payment or charge, SIGERN, which is a certified document. Uh, it's a very strange, I mean, supposedly from Sigelum. Um, and then we have another of these, like let's say legalistic terms, which is here, which is Simer, which means statement. So, It suggests that this thing is a rather official form of text. It's not, it's not simply a prayer, a prayer with curse. There is some type of, at least an attempt to give this thing an official character. And, you know, it, it refers to this King Yoel as well. And we don't know exactly what the role of this king is here. Um, Actually, by the way, I think the last video I said that, you know, because we know the archaeology, archaeological dating, um, we have an idea of when this King Joel lived. It may very well be, actually, I realized later that because the King Joel appears in here, <clears throat> and he also appears in several other late texts, they base the dating of the church on, on, on the name of the King Joel, right? So actually, I don't, I don't, I don't even know. 
which way uh, which way the inference went who knows um, it's not something I'm terribly interested in right now this is something for historians um, and I for the moment would just like to read the text another thing that I would really like to look into is this goofal I don't know if this is a wow that seems very very weird okay so um, I made it to corrections what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and make this a little bit smaller so we can get a little bit more text in here there and then I prepared so what I do is then um, I prepared this document in which I basically split it out as you can see by line and by word so I can start to make annotations and then usually I also start here um, with a translation so I usually like to have this split screen I'm sorry this becomes a lot of screens but this is simply how I work so I have my image material on one side my transcription and then my analysis here Just, uh, my analysis and so I can quickly switch between them and I also have dictionary open here by Brown so we can scroll through that together um, and then another thing that I have is I have a Zotero library um, if you look on Zotero oh, we want this and uh, okay of course I don't remember the login um, but if you go here and you search for methodology I think it's called What is this called? Yeah, methodology. Oops, there we go. This. Um, then you find the the entire my entire library basically. Um, I have a bit more, but I'm currently updating all of this and and also trying to make them more accessible so you can browse and look and um, and see you see all of these attachments but I don't think you can open them through this interface so I'm, I'm gonna try to find an, a way around that um, sorry I was just checking if this microphone is actually working I'm gonna try to find a way around that um, so that access is a bit better um, but if you if you search the zero for new biology you will find this group and um, I think that you can just um, log in and and register to become a member and that should give you a bit more access in any case um, my entire research library is is at least viewable online and I would be happy to share any PDF from here uh, should you need it for your own uh, research okay boom so that's that's here this is just the local the local app that I use in order to search what I have okay so we have everything here um, well the first thing we can do is um, translate in the name of the father and son let's keep these capitals we really like to capitalize these because they're persons of the Trinity and the Holy Spirit. Period. Okay, so this is our first our opening, and then it starts with I Mama. Okay, which is happening here. Now the first thing I want to look at today is actually this end piece. Um, because it seems as if we have a pretty clear idea. I'm just trying to find a good picture of this last part, uh, maybe this one. Yeah, 
we have a pretty good idea of um, this list of names. I imagine this is a standard list of names, which means that we should be able to reconstruct this name. Um, and we have quite a few uh, full words here. This certainly is not the last letter, right? I mean, there's, there is a letter here. Uh, this is too big of a space and yeah, you wouldn't cut off simply an N. Maybe an alpha, maybe it's a genitive. Um, this tuck, uh, not very clear, but if you have tuck here, I can live with that. So let's, um, let's go to this part here. Um, um, first, let's look at this emetica. So this is really quite nice. Um, if we look at the dictionary, Again, no, we are in the 15th century. So the dictionary is based on 11th, 12th century texts or earlier, um, maybe 8th to 12th century language. 15th century language is clearly different, but we don't really understand how different it is because we have so few editions of texts from this period. Um, but it's really nice because if we go to um, the word, if we look at what Brown said, because Brown new the Donna Donna edition. So we have Emmet here, salt. And then the question is immediately, why on earth would you want to have salt, right? We are dealing here with a curse. Um, names of bad people are mentioned, you know, with Herod, somebody else, and Judas. So um, salt in this context doesn't seem to make any sense. This relation with imit salt is, is phonologically not plausible, but we have a very well attested word, which is emente, which means hell. And so this word is obviously, or not obviously, but I would suggest that this is actually hell here. Um, emetica, from emendica to emetica. Um, not very strange. So what I then usually do is here, emente. Um, I'd usually previously unattested. And, uh, hell. And page of the dictionary with accusative case. Right, so that's this K. Um, this then becomes a good. Yeah, what then this would be udem. When I see this u, we see this, see this mu, I'm like thinking darkness or something, but then what would the case be? This is an accusative. Like why is an accusative here? That's already a question. Is this a verb? But then what is this? This is, it looks like something Greek um, or a Greek loan. Uh, let's, let's have a look at the, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to find where the, uh, here. Um, apo. Yeah, calm. Yeah, apo calm. This is not, this is not an unlikely reading. Maybe something is here. It's not very clear if there is something here. And he's writing to, I mean, this is clearly just a letter. Uh, this is not interpunction, this is some type of word. Let's, let's look at this form here, D gamma. That's it. That's right here. So this is clear. The gamma is also kind of clear. Okay, so let's check in the dictionary. I think it's to be bound or something. Um, to be many, to die. Mm -hmm. 
digramme so there is this let them be many may god multiply your years here it is diegra this diegra so which is a well wish May God multiply your years. Is there a place? Digra. It's not, it's not possible. <clears throat> but if this belongs to what is previous, then A new sentence starts here. A new sentence starts with this Herod. And usually when this is used as a well wish, then it's like, may God multiply your years. But I don't see years. Yeah, does he give an example here? Yeah, like something here. Humanly go con diegra treso, tireso. Diegra tireso. May God give you many years. May God multiply your years. Uh, here we have actually the form. And then what we can do is like, okay, so this, maybe this is similar to this. Then what we do is we can look at PQI2 at the text and see what it looks like um, in that text. That's usually what I do. And then sometimes you find it's like, oh yeah, it could be similar, maybe it's that. So it's a lot of going back and forth. Um, text volume two, this one, yeah. Okay. And the good thing about the dictionary of Brown is that he really has put in most of the attestations. This is such a bad thing. Scan though. So it's 2412, right? We're looking at this reference here. Yeah, you see, this is the typical usage. Um, may God tell your years in Gemlika di Grami. So I don't, I don't see that here. Um, so it may very well be not, it may very well be that this is not that form. You see an dig digit c deg, so we can also look there. Yeah, where is deg? Sometimes the dictionary is not entirely. This is the norm. Ah, here. Servant testament. Ah, uh, wait, this is a misspelling. Yeah, to be bound. Okay, good. I was, I was not imagining this. This is, this row should be a gamma. This is a typo in the, in the dictionary, as you can see. In Deagle, blah, blah, blah. This is from literary text. Ah, this is interesting. Power Mishan Tadal Digin. Interesting because um, it shows a combination with this commutative dull, which we have here. 
So, um, let's first start with um, writing this down. Big to be bound. Um, with predicate marker alpha and Okay. And we can also fill these out actually. Um, okay, proper name uh, to this with according to Though, and we have to word. Okay, so uh, this then is an unknown proper name, not yet known. Okay, so we found here in our dictionary to be bound with now this is PQI three, so this is um, sometimes his translations are a little bit off, but let's see. Index because we're doing three, so thirty-two. So that's rather early. Ah, it's a sale for plot of land. Oh, that is nice because we're dealing here with a plot of land. Um, where was the word para here? So we're we're in some legal sales contest, but it seems to be very serious. Um, your para another my uh, his uh, in his field or in his plot plot of land. Um, so what is annoying about PQI3 is that the translations are separate from the text. So let's see here first. Um, we are dealing with line 12. Um, blah, blah, blah. Actually, so this is the, the title, summits. Uh, okay. Mm. Here, it appears in the dating for the dating formula, in the formula in which all the officials are listed, who is king when, and only here starts actually like the text of I, uh, Shirepi, or whatever he's called, from so and so, this in this field. Okay, let's have a quick look at how he's translated this line. I don't know. I cannot translate on site these types of documentary text. I need to have a dictionary. I need to sit down, look at the grammar. Um, I wish I was able to do that. And the nobody all authority being attached to him. Okay, um, that is not very helpful, but what is good is that it, that it shows us that there seems to be an idiomatic usage of the commutative here with being attached to. Um, so this then confirms that this verb and this noun phrase belong together. And that is helpful because it tells us something about the grammar. It also means um, that 
this is probably the object and this is the subject. In other words, may Raphael bind him or attach him to Herod and Judas. So this is very nice, actually. Um, this is, um, let's So we need this whole thing. No. Just, um, adjunct to this verb. And then I can say 32 line 12. Um, not all. Um, then we also know Taka now exactly what that is doing. Uh, come on. Uh, and this is the object. Uh, up. Um, this is again Raphael. Subject of now that means that we can just at least put the translation here. May Raphael bind him with Herod. Judas all right and so suddenly we have you know three lines which is not which is not that bad um, then the question is is um, is this located? It cannot be location. But if it's if it's emetila, maybe it's emetila. No, it's clearly a kappa. I mean, it would be good if this would be something like another. and place him in hell or something, right? So bind him to Herod and Judas and place him in hell. So that this is another verbal form. Mm, let's actually look at what Donadoni says about these last lines because the, he although he couldn't read this language at all he made notes right he he said something here maybe what does he say nothing at all this is so useless okay useless uh, i don't i don't have to say anything at all about this line mm, but my hunch is is that this is a verbal form it is i mean it is very tempting if indeed is this a moo to read an atta here just This is a vertical here. And a tau or a gamma. Yeah. 
messing with two days. That could be feasible. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, this may be very boring, but um, this is how we slowly puzzle a text together and, and come to a plausible A plausible reconstruction. Tools. Yeah. No. It, it really feels as if this is already too. Okay, so I'm just going to mark this up for, for it makes it a bit easier. So there is this round form here. This seems okay. Then there is what appears to be this. Maybe a vertical here. There is this thing here, but what is it? It looks to me like a gamma. It's quite tiny. Gammas are usually not that big. And look at the look at the moon here. This is this is really quite similar. Hmm. Now we have, maybe this is not a verb, maybe, maybe it is this verb, but then it would be like a Greek loan verb. This thing here, because we haven't really thought about this. Um, So let's look at this apple column because the reading apple column all, the reading is not that bad. Apple is clearly visible here. This is a kappa and alpha, a bit smooshed, lobda, mu, clear apple column. Apple column, apple column. All. Now the question is what what on earth is that? Um, we are this is so it's 15th century. A Greek, we have no idea how much um, Greek is spoken or written at that moment in time in Nubia. It's clearly really past the date that Greek was a, a, a commonly spoken language. And we are basically in one of the southernmost locations where Greek was spoken. I mean, um, here, for example, another graffito in the church. It has some Greek in it, to Argasu, Osta Grapsa, blah, 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 Agrapson. Now you see all these weird forms. Now here we have Apokur, Ego, Umos, Apokur. Ego, Filiagna, Huyos, Arianta, Egon, Purkundi. This is place name. Eros and Rafael Grapsa. You see the spellings. The spellings are off. Epagonos. So this is the date. Here is another old Nubian, blah, blah, blah. And by the way, this, this is old Nubian. This is Old Nubian. I don't have these images. Okay. Um, I had no idea there were other Old Nubian texts here um, that have not been published properly. So in the month. This just seems to be a date. Okay, in any case, not much help here. 
Um, let's see if something like Apple Column has actually been tested before, and I doubt it, but... Um, you never know. Oh, here. A kind of shoe. That seems highly unlikely. Well, let's have a look. Um, Apple. That would be weird. Um, PQI1, Plumdium Brown, um, ba -ba -ba -ba. eleven. Ah, oh, of course. So this is the Libre Institutionis Michelis, which I recently worked on with Alexandros Sakos. And yeah, they talk about the shoes of peace indeed. But um, well, where is this text? Yeah, there is a Coptic text also. But it's super destroyed in some parts. Um, two or three. Oh, wait, this is not photographed. Okay, um, but there is another edition of this text. Uh, this one. Yeah. Um, Two, three, two, three, sorry. I, I refer to Dutch. Here. And the shoes of peace were given to Michael. The Victoria Shields of the Staff of Readiness with Security of World and the Shoes of Peace are given to Michael. But why would shoes? I don't know. I don't know. I don't understand. Yeah, but this is not an unlikely Omicron, actually. Um, I'm just gonna here it becomes horrific. So um, I'm just going to put this in here. I'm not very happy with it because it makes no sense to me at the moment. But maybe it will make sense later. Okay, now let's have a look at our little 
trio here of Herod, uh, Herod, somebody else, and Judas. Um, so what is nice about the Ulumi um, Dictionary is I think that there's an index of names. So I can look for Herod. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, Noel, Ivan, Joseph, Yuda, Yunus Kariot. Here may be interesting because here it appears in a graffito. Like the attestations in the Nicene Canon is, is like, you know, don't do this, don't be like Judas, blah, blah, blah. Judas Iscariot here is also not really. Oh, well, what is this? PQI 330? This is uh, the whole proclamation. Um, Let's have a look there. Hmm. I wish I had all these. I wish I had all these texts just in my head. But um, the reality is that they are not. And that I constantly have to look up things. There is this um, famous perhaps apocryphal story about Gerald Brown, um, who was the old Nubian scholar preceding me and who has made most of the uh, uh, editions of texts. And I'm basically working on all the uh, scraps that he didn't, that he didn't edit or re-edit. That um, he was teaching the Staros texts, probably in his university and Urbana-Champaign, University of Illinois, and that he'd forgotten his book one day and he asked the students like where, which line did I leave it off last uh, last week and they gave him the line number and he just wrote the old Nubian text on the board um, from memory. I, uh, I do not have such immense powers, uh, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, 332. Okay, so this is the end, so that's not so bad. Um, uh, up. So this clearly is a part of, uh, may take a part with Judas, uh, Judas Iscariot, blah, blah, blah. You can see that, let's, let's look at the translation. So this is part of a curse at the end of a legal text. So we have, it's good that we have a, um, uh, where are the translations? So we have, it's good that we have a similar usage of Judas at the end. So that's already something we should note in our own edition. Um, pop, 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 here. Sale of blood of land. Uh, sorry, 30. Let him have a heart attack. Let him receive a share with Judas Iscariot. Yeah, because actually this text has this fantastic curse at the end. Like, which is even numbered. Uh, which is really quite nice. Let Epimogos stab him with his spear. Let him die through the king's curse. Let him have a heart attack. Let him have... Uh, let him receive a share with Judas Iscariot, the wounder of mankind and the betrayer. Let him not find anyone, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so what we should do um, is, in any case here is mention, um, Formatting. 
if I know what's going on. Probably have to revisit actually this text to provide a uh, a proper translation because the one of brown is maybe not completely up to date. Um, but what is really nice is that we really have this curse here, um, and again, usage of this uh, commutative here. Okay, so this this makes me feel a bit better. Um, now here, it, so Judas, we don't have anything useful. Actually, Graffito 10.7. Um, it's useful to look at this because this is a, a wall text and we are dealing with a wall text. Um, and so this is in Griffith. Um, I think in Nubian text from the Christian period, it's it's always a guess. With this sigla. Um, takes a bit to load because it's a very big file. So this is still the Star Wars text. I think they're a bit later. Here we are in the dictionary. So this is Griffith 1913, Nubian text from the Christian period. It's one of the first full editions, and now we're already in the grammar process, first full editions of the then extant corpus uh, of Old Nubian text. Um, and also one of the first grammatical sketches. It wasn't actually very bad. I mean, did a pretty good job for, for what he had available back then. These are the graffiti, I think. From Jebel Abda. At a conspicuous corner where the rocks reach the water on the east bank between Abel Simba and Jebada. It's all underwater now. Ugh. Mm, so this is lost. This is interesting, yeah? It again talks about King Joel. Line seven here. This is fascinating, yeah? Because we have here another text. This is interesting. We have another text that starts with invocation. It talks about, it again uses this weird word, siglum, which is also in our text here. It features a King Yoel, I King Yoel. I would love to see an image of this. Oh, why 
why don't we have an image of this? And perhaps here's the name of Judas. This is, you see, there is actually a list. This Kelda, Keldal with Koame, Pika Koame. Is this Pika Koame? May he have, or Ika Koame. How is this even? May he have you with Nagnarlo. This nearly seems again. Ah, and this word Simer. Wow. Wow. Okay. Um, well, this certainly I'm just going to take a quick share screenshot of this. This certainly warrants um, several notes. Um, General commentary. Just gonna list. This text may actually help us in a way that I don't understand yet with understanding what's going on in our text. Um, where was this with Simerka? There, five, six. Because like the sequence, right? We have this first, this certified statement, then we have message, and the order is the same. We have, where is our, let's get in, see alone. I don't know. And we have King Joel, but this is written by King Joel, whereas ours apparently is not, but maybe um, we this should also be revisited. I don't know. Um, You wrote, yeah, what do we? Okay, so we have this now for later reference. Um, and maybe actually I should uh, add.
I don't know if, if there's actually a photograph. It was called by Gaon photographs in 1900. Ah, so there is a photograph. So maybe I should uh, look for this photograph actually. I don't know if there's, did anyone else ever look at this text? So then we can go um, back to our DBMNT. Uh, we have a provenance, that is uh, The language is Olympian. Not so many things. Um, Okay, why is this not here? What is it? Let's see, I was in there. This is a bit the annoying thing about the GBMT, it's like you don't really know sometimes where things have been. This one, Abu Oda, yeah. Okay, so this is Abu Oda. Sometimes they figure out, oh no, it was somewhere else. And then, um, right over Finito, and this may be something. Victor Ruffini, 2011. Mm -hmm. Here, Kasser Green Last Land Sale. What does it say? 225, 226. I'm sorry, but I, I only have this book in hardcover. Um, so I'm gonna quickly look. Um, if there's anything here. Okay, they mentioned the Tamid text. And they also made the connection with the Abu Oda. So let's mark this as something that we should also um, have as um, check. when it does that. Check. Okay, though. So we, so this is how we are slowly building up. Also, you know, knowledge about what other new biologists wrote about this. I again have no storage capacity in my brain to actually remember who wrote about which text. So, like these types of tools that tells, okay, like who looked at these texts? Da -da 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 -da. Oh, this looks interesting. Let's have a look. I look into the, you know, edition 
of a completely different text they discuss a, a Kasser Ibrahim land sale which is particularly late um, and then that gives us you know some insight into like other people who talked about King Joel and apparently people did and so this allows me in the general commentary to, to comment on this so that's again very helpful um, because I'm obviously not the first person to look at this text after Donadoni published it um, I am the first person that is stupid enough to think that they can improve the edition okay so the last thing that I want to do today um, uh, this is actually quite good progress. Uh, I mean, we were able to translate an entire sentence. Um, that's not always uh, <laughs> a given. So, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. So the only other thing I want to check is this really strange word, gufa. Um, so let's close this. And let's have a look here. I don't know, it would be fantastic if this is actually in a dictionary, but... It's such a specific word. Oof. There we go. Meaning unknown. Ah, here it's gufo opios now. That's what we read here. He just copied the Donadoni transcription, I think. Yeah. Unknown. Unknown, 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 unknown. To shake, blah, blah, blah. Um, so what we then can do is actually start looking at modern Nubian dictionaries. So um, I do have a digital copy of Arm Brewster, which I recently cut up and scanned. This is the paperback copy that was reissued by Cambridge some time ago. Printed on demand. I don't. I don't. It cost them a couple of pounds, but they sell this for like thirty or forty pounds. It's just, if not more, it's like really disgusting. I mean, come on, guys. You already made your profit on this when you issued the hard copy. Like, why on earth would you make this so expensive? So, if you want the PDF of this, I'd be happy to give it to you. Um, I cut up my um, paperback copy because I bought a, a hard copy and an antiquariat. Um. Goof, lock, padlock, goofu. This is not particularly promising. Um, let's have a look at um, Meinhof, some other It's mine off, right? Um, well, that's also, wait, let me check Khalil. <laughs> I have not digitized this yet. Um, oh, okay. it's, it's a Mokhtar Khalil's Wörterbuch der Nusche Sprache. Um, probably if it wasn't here, Brown would have found it as well. Goof, 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 goof. This Khalil dictionary is, not, is a little bit useful. Um, one of the insane things that he did is to alphabetize Nubian words based on an Arabic radical interpretation. So like you have to look at the consonants rather than at just, uh, I don't know, don't ask me. I don't know who edited this and why. I mean, this was edited by Stefan Jakubielski, who is an archeologist. Um, not the best useful job in the fucking world, but right, we'll deal with it. And I don't see goof here either. Now then one other thing we can do is to look a bit further afield um, in Werner's dictionary of Midob, or dictionary word list, I would say. It's not, it's not a particularly good dictionary. So we know that gu um, is devoiced in Midob, so we can look under the K if there's anything that like kup or something or kup. Sometimes this vowel is also. We have here grave, glass, grave to engrave. This is a locative. Oh, 
can't, it's from Arabic, so useless. Um, uh, nothing. This is nice, for example, this in Old is in Nai. So you see this, there is this uh, velar, but it's not a nasal, but a consonant. They have k instead of nai. Um, no such luck. Okay, this remains unknown for the moment. Um, good, so that is, I think, all the work I can do on this text today. We fixed three lines in the end without being able, ah, yeah, wait, wait, wait. This Herod, come on. Um, who is the third person in this threesome? Um, this should be something we can find out. If not, then it will be for next time, but. Herod, Herod, Herod. Yeah, this is useless. Although, no, this is again in this sale. Uh, this is the royal acclamation. And this is in the lectionary, it's also particularly useless. Um, You can always Google, and if that doesn't work, then we'll leave it for today. And uh, Herod and Judas. Pain. So what is this story? Punishment of the wicked priest and the death of. Oh, come on, you guys. Uh. There we go. Um, I am not ashamed to use Sihab. Like, sorry. Um, bum, 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 bum. Can I just search like this? Yep. Yeah. Like popular tradition, this is going to kind of use it very well. In hell. So this then suggests that maybe this name is Cain. I would need to do a little bit of more literature research. The reason. Uh, The ex of Thomas. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, I'm just going to save this for later reference.
and um, let's call it a day. So we did three lines. It's not so bad. But you see how slow this process is. Like it takes many, many hours before I feel we have exhausted all the options and then probably we still won't have a complete text, but we're getting slowly somewhere. All right, um, that's it. Thanks for listening to me ramble. And um, yeah, um, I'll post another installment whenever I have time to work on this text. All right, goodbye.